Right, hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Um, right, in this uh, video, this is going to be a continuation on the, on the fireplace restoration series that I'm doing. And um, this is another fireplace. This, in this video, I'm going to be fitting a lintel, a straight, straight lintel. In the last video, you saw I'd done an archway, but that, that project has stopped and it's um, discontinued now. Um, what we do is work and start carrying on basically from this stage. Um, there's still a bit of brickwork I need to do in here, such as I need to remove a lot of bricks here to even it out and get it a bit wider. And um, there's a couple of lintels in here as well. I'm going to remove this lintel and see how this lintel looks. I've got a replacement lintel if this one needs replacing, but I, I want to remove this one anyway. Hopefully this lintel up here is okay to stay in there, then I'll just take the other lintel back to the shop. Um, also, when this had a back burner sort of gas fireplace from the 70s, and for the pipe work, whoever was here before removed a bunch of brickwork here. Also, a lot of bricks along here, but removed um, a load of bricks in here to pass all the water pipes through and all that. So what we'll be doing is just uh, filling this hole back up, the same on the other side where they knocked out some bricks. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, if you really like this video, um, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you um, if you really really like it, really enjoy it, feel like you got something out of it, and want to see more, um, please hit the subscribe button. Let's go on with it. Who the hell's my dust pass? Right, so there we go. Goodbye, Mr. Lintel. Right. Yeah, so as you can see, it's quite a nice height. You know, got a six inch round uh, through line of hair. Obviously, that'll be cut. That'll be cut further up when the time comes. But now, I'll leave it, but I'm not going to need to are like razor sharp. And I've already scratched my hands up a bunch of times. So I see to put some duct tape around there. And um, I might block it with something as well, or just stop a draft. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, what I'll be doing next is um, just removing the rendering, just to visually inspect the lintel. See the lintel overlapping over the brickwork. What we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll also check the other side as well. Uh, oh yeah, um, recently I've just discovered that these things exist called um, scratch chisels or comb chisels, and these things are amazing. So anyone just like doing this sort of stuff, DIY stuff, uh, I'll definitely get hold of one of these. Uh, they're super cheap or from from the tool station, they're super, super cheap, they're like five pounds or something, and it comes with the, the comb bit. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll be good. You, know, you can do a little fine stuff, it's good for chasing out for when you're fit, um, wiring. Yeah, it looks like it perhaps.
And there we go. Now, as you see, it overlaps. So I'm happy with that. There's the brick. There's the brick. There's your brick. And there's the lintel coming over. Right, okay, what I'm going to do is um, just knock off these high spots on the bricks, uh, ready for rendering. I'm not going to be rendering just yet, I still need to cement these bricks into place. But I'm just going around to just level it all off with this um, scratch chisel. So yeah, what I'm doing is just doing that. Okay, so now we're on to this next bit. Got this little mixer thing here for the drill. Um, got a spirit level and got this high temperature adhesive. Um, you can get that from sort of tile, well, the tops tiles. You can get that from tops tiles. Uh, about thirty pounds for this tub, um, but it's more than enough for what we need here. And we've got the cement board here. Uh, this hardy backer board and. Um, yeah, we're going to be using that. We're going to be using a small, smooth side on the outside. So then, you know, all we have to do is paint it once it's in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some measurements. I'm going to mark on this um, board what I need to cut. And then, um, yeah, you'll see, you'll see how it all goes anyway. But, um, yeah.
Definitely a good idea. It shouldn't take too long to dry, so we um, will leave it for about an hour. Alright, so I've coated in there with the PVA and water mix and I've just stuck that um, oil heater in there just to help it along dry. Hopefully I can get it dry today because I really want to bond these um, boards in. I really want to get these boards um, stuck in there. So uh, yeah, so once that back board's glued in place I can measure up for the two side boards. And um, yeah, I'm gonna need to do a strip as well for the top, a board for the top. Um, going along the top, I'll just tidy it up a bit. And um, yeah. So I've got three cups of water here. I'm going to do nine, nine cups of water. Look at that. And two separate bags. Nine, nine cups of 
this once. But yeah, what I will mix it as I tip it in so I don't get any chunks. that much what I've just mixed up. I do. Just leave it for a um, Let's leave it. Let's see. There's plenty on there. There's plenty on there. So, um, yeah, that'll do. That'll do the trick. I'm just gonna wash up, clean this bucket out, and um, I'll start. I'll start measuring up for the other bits. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Quite good. Yeah, I'll do a trowel there. Right.
just because of the thing itself. Right, okay. Let's get this in there. Yeah, well, I'll do the other side. I won't, I won't bother show you that. It's pretty much just what I've just done just now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'll do. Um, I'll do the other side, and I think I'll call it good. Uh, I still need to do the top bit, actually. Yeah, yeah. I still need to do the top bit. And then it'll be done. So I'll get back to showing you me cutting that top bit, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right. Um, because it's really late now, because it's really late, so I don't want to obviously use the arm grinder to cut this. So I want to do an experiment see if I can cut with this. Um, I reckon it will cut, but it's going to destroy the saw. And it'll be good anyway to see if this will actually cut quite easily with this. For the people out there that want to do this, but don't have, don't have a, um, uh, obviously a workbench <laughs> in this case, and an arm grinder. So make sure I'm not going to cut the table. So I don't know, I'll just, um, yeah, cut it. Well, it seems to cut easy. turn it out this um it's still a bit it's still a bit doughy but it is setting um yeah so yeah i've learned a little bit from this um yeah i've learned i learned something from this from this i'm um, doing this um as you can see this piece here um, i cut my hand but i actually forgot to prep the underside here there's still got a bit of soot there so I'm not going to attempt to glue this on now anyway. Now uh, well, I do have to do it another time, but it just pops in here. So that's nice and good. It's, good. it's not a perfectly tight fit. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but you don't want a tight fit on any of these because when it expands with the heat, once it starts expanding with the heat, it will um, obviously expand. You don't want it wedging up against something, especially this. When it expands, it could bow, bow down suddenly and uh, ruin all your nice um, plaster work. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you felt like you learned something uh, from this video, or you just enjoyed it anyway, enjoyed watching, you know, please um, hit the thumbs up button. And um, if you really, really enjoyed it, you know, please subscribe and you'll see the next installment. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you later.